The first steps that I take in treating a patient that comes to me is establishing a relationship, especially when a person has cancer. Welcome back to the Longevity D Process channel. That was Dr. George Papanikolaou, a renowned leader in the field of integrative medicine, joins us today to share his unique perspective. He expertly blends conventional medical knowledge with a holistic approach to healthcare. In this eye-opening video, Dr. Papanikolaou will shed light on the importance of early cancer detection through advanced diagnostic testing. You'll discover how personalized lifestyle recommendations, a cornerstone of integrative medicine, can empower individuals to take control of their health and potentially reduce cancer risk. Prepare to be inspired as Dr. Papanikolaou shares his insights on the transformative power of integrative medicine in the fight against cancer. At the end, we'll provide a general diet and lifestyle guideline to preventing cancer. Now, listen to how the doctor approaches cancer and his patients. Because, as you can imagine, it's a very, very vulnerable place to be. It's a very scary and uncertain place to be. And when your doctor or healthcare provider can enter into that space in that place with you and show you empathy, it makes all the difference in the world. That empathy and that compassion actually is part of the healing process. That's where I start. Compassion is very important. And then what? Then the hard work begins. I want to find out everything I can about that patient. I want to know the mood their mother was in the night they were conceived, all the way up to the last symptom they had, the moment they walked into my office. When I get all that information, I'm able to find the triggers that may possibly have started the cascade of events that threw their system out of balance that resulted in a cancer forming. That trigger may be the root cause or maybe one of several causes to their cancer. And that's how we go looking for it, with a really, really strong history. What do you do with all the information you receive? Now, as I gather that information, I plot it out on something called the functional medicine matrix. That matrix has, it's like a wheel with seven spokes. And I take the symptoms and I put them into the physiologic spokes. So we have one spoke that is the gut and the digestive processes. We have another spoke, which are the immune processes. And another spoke, which is energy, mitochondrial function. We have another one that is toxins. And we have another spoke that is the cardiovascular system and the transport system within the body. We have another spoke that's going to be the hormones and neurotransmitters that communicate throughout the body. And then we have our last spoke, which is the structures. The structures, everything from the mitochondrial membrane all the way up to a bone. They're all structures. What does this information tell you? The symptoms that they have represent some type of imbalance or malfunction in one of those system pieces. Now, all those system pieces are interdependent and integrated, and they're working together to maintain your health, to regulate your health, and to actually heal you. And once I've put all that information on that wheel, and it's actually on paper, but it's also in my brain and the gears are turning, I can begin to find those root causes that we need to work on. By the time I'm done getting the history, using the, the matrix, I usually have a really good understanding of where we're gonna need to go. But I often do still have some of the puzzle pieces missing. And that's where I do some testing. What kind of testing do you do? The three most important tests that I do are a, nu a complete nutritional analysis, a digestive system microbiome, microbiome analysis, and a DNA analysis. Please tell us why these three tests? Why these three tests? We know that oxidation, inflammation, infection, toxins are all part of the chronic illness and cancer cascade. These three tests provide the first really good look under the hood and help me begin to understand physiologically where some of the problems may be. The first test I do is a nutritional analysis. The nutritional analysis that I do 
looks for 125 nutritional markers. It also looks for biomarkers of metabolic dysregulation, inflammation, oxidation, and toxins. The second test I do is a gut slash um, digestion slash microbiome test. Almost every patient that walks into my office has gut issues. The test that I do will look for markers of inflammation, an imbalance of important bacteria, the presence of infection, and even toxins in the stool. And the last test? The third test I do is a genetic test. The way I explain it to patients is that we're looking for not mutations, but small variations in your gene blueprint that will possibly predispose you to physiologic abnormalities that lead to chronic disease and cancers. I can explain it like this. You're a contractor, so you're gonna be building bathrooms for all types of people. And so when a person comes to you, you wanna be prepared for whatever the budget is. So you have one blueprint for a cheap bathroom. You get a toilet, you get a sink, and you get a light bulb. Then you have a more moderate budget. That person gets a nicer sink, a nicer bathtub, they get a nice fixture, and they get a, a laundry, they get a, a linen closet. And then you have the really high budget one with the jacuzzi and the waterfall shower and the marble. They're all different but they're all labeled bathrooms. And you look at the blueprint, and at the top of each blueprint, it's going to say bathroom. But each one of those is gonna function differently. It's the same thing with the genes that we're looking for. They're called single nucleotide polymorphisms. They're the gene blueprints that have one mild variance, like the variances we saw in those bathrooms, that will result in the protein that they make having a different type of function. It might function too fast, it might function too slow, it might not function at all. And if we can identify that, we can then help you change your lifestyle, give you a nutritional plan, and even targeted supplements that account for that variation so that it doesn't have that long-term impact and lead possibly to chronic disease or cancer. So it's a really important test. Anything more about these tests? The test that I use looks at five critical physiologic pathways and the possible variations and blueprints that make those pathways work. Those pathways include oxidation, inflammation, methylation, and detoxification. Variances in any one of those can be fairly critical. As an example, there are genes that make proteins that are responsible for detoxifying and removing estrogen. One's called the CYP1A1 and one's called the COMT. If you have single variations in those genes, you're not going to be able to re appropriately remove estrogen out of your system once it's done its job and it needs to be removed. Once the estrogen has done its job, it's gonna be metabolized and some of those those intermediate metabolites are actually inflammatory. And if you can't move them out of your system appropriately because you have variations in those two genes, they recycle. And now you have recycling inflammatory estrogen compounds, which increase your risk for breast cancer. If we can identify 20, when you're 20 years old, we can identify that you have those genes and they have those variances, then we can actually give you a lifestyle, a nutrition plan, and targeted supplements that will upregulate up the detoxification and removal of estrogen. And instead of worrying about whether you need to get a mammogram or therm thermography, you've taken care of removing your, your cancer causing, your, 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 you created for yourself a cancer-free zone. Um, and you've created, you know, instead of a cancer, a, a cancer generating zone. And that's what I really worry about. I wanna create that type of environment. Reducing cancer risk involves a two-pronged approach. What you eat and how you live. Focus on filling your plate with colorful fruits, vegetables, and whole grains at every meal. 
These plant-based powerhouses are packed with nutrients that may help lower cancer risk. Swap processed foods for whole, unprocessed options to avoid unhealthy fats, added sugars, and sodium. Choose lean protein sources like fish, poultry, beans, and lentils more often than red meat. Opt for healthy fats found in avocados, nuts, seeds, and olive oil. Beyond diet, prioritize regular exercise, aiming for at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity activity most weeks. Quitting smoking is essential for cancer prevention. Protect your skin from the sun's harmful UV rays by seeking shade, wearing protective clothing, and using sunscreen with SPF 30 or higher. Finally, ensure you get enough sleep, aiming for 7 to 8 hours of quality rest each night. Remember, this is a general guideline. Consulting with your doctor or a registered dietitian can help you create a personalized plan for optimal health. Remember, your health is the lock and we're here to provide the keys. The key to lifelong vitality is in your hands. It's just one bite away.